Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna to be checking out this $450 gaming PC that we bought off of Amazon. This isn't exactly a gaming PC. The company didn't market it as that, but it has been popping up on my Amazon search results when looking up gaming PCs. So I thought I'd pick it up and just show you guys some of the things that you can buy in 2021. Um, spoiler, it's probably not gonna be that great. But before we talk more about this PC, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their B550 Tai Chi Razer motherboard. This motherboard supports AMD's 5000 series CPUs and boasts a 16 phase Dr. Moss power design to handle even the highest end CPUs that AMD has to offer. Now, if you love RGB, then this motherboard featuring Razer Chroma ARGB support will allow you to sync the lighting of your motherboard and Razer Chroma enabled devices for a truly immersive experience. The motherboard also comes packed with killer Ethernet E3100 and killer Wi-Fi 6 designed specifically for competitive gamers and performance hungry users to reduce network latency and offer an awesome online experience. Now, if you want to learn more about this motherboard, be sure to check the link in the description down below and special thanks again to ASRock for sponsoring today's video. So looking at the pictures of this actual PC, you'll see some really nice glass and RGB fans. Um, the box is really small. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but this is like Optiplex size, so I don't really know what to expect. Another thing is, as Matt said, this is, this is really not for gaming. Um, they have gaming in the title. I will be surprised if this thing runs Minecraft and Fortnite. It should be pretty bad. It's mainly marketed as an office PC. They do sell gaming PCs, Allied Gaming that is, on Amazon, so you could check those out if you want to, but this one did pop up a lot, so I was going to take a look at it. Just so you guys know, just because there's RGB on the case and everything, it does not make it a gaming PC because you know sometimes companies like to do that. So let's not waste any more time and open this thing up. All right, so time to open up this Allied Gaming. Game is one, I guess this is the gaming ally gaming javelin um so this is really weird i'm not gonna lie matt was explaining this to me and i had no clue apparently this is on an am4 platform probably when like am4 first started so you do have ddr4 ram um you, you maybe have an upgrade path i don't really know like what even is this actual board is it an a320 or? i believe it's an a320 i could be wrong though we'll look at it when we open it up i'm not gonna lie the packaging itself like this is kind of cool is this the keyboard or is it, it just be. Oh, oh, no. Wi-Fi adapter. Wi-Fi adapter. Good point. Actually, their own brand, which is kind of cool. We have the uh, power supply cable. It comes with an extra SATA cable. Oh, I see what they did. They used one of those all-in-one, you know, the ones that had the CPU solder to the yes. motherboard. That's what this is. Okay, so, yeah, and you see the A10N-8800. Um, so, like Matt's saying, this is probably going to be one where you can't even take the CPU off. It's literally soldered on. It's going to have a really small fan. Um, and it's BIOS. BIOSTAR was really popular, actually, for doing that. They would take these like kind of weird motherboards that you, you can't get these anywhere else. Like this isn't a normal build now that we're really into it. God, this is gonna be so small. Oh my, it's um, so tiny. I know, now, you know what, it'll be kind of fun. Maybe we should see at some point if we can upgrade it and yeah. make it better. And yeah. who knows, I might not even have a PC island though. We yeah, might let, even be able to add a graphics card. Yeah, let us know down below if you guys want us to do a follow up with this and try to upgrade it and make it the best $450 PC off Amazon. All right, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty small. Um, I'm curious what this case is gonna be like, if it's like a custom, like their own case. Um, the fan in the back, God, I uh, hate static. The fan in the back is like really, oh my God, it's so cute. Oh, it's the tiniest thing. We need to pull another computer in here for comparison. Yeah, wow. Oh, they, yeah, they got it packed in the inside. So we have an acrylic side panel. Um, let's just, uh, let's, let's start it on the front, I guess. So on the front, uh, attention, please remove, uh, yeah, okay, they want us to remove the packaging. I, wow, that sticker's really on there. I already Honestly, hate I them. really like this case. Um, it is, it's actually cute. So we have a reset switch, an RGB button. So we do have control bar RGB, supposedly. We have USB 3. There's some more stuff under here, but this is really on here, so I don't feel like getting it off right now. It's probably a combo audio port. It's another USB. Um, two fans in the front. We have one fan in the rear that's non-RGB. It's literally a 90 mil fan. Um, we have four USB in the back, Ethernet, um, HDMI, and VGA. That's the only display you're going to be able to use. The case itself does have PCI lanes, but I have a feeling this is like a mini ITX board and it only goes to here. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and open it up. Before that, though, like Matt said, let's get a case in here real quick and just compare it. We're going to go on a trip real quick just to show you guys how small it is. It is extremely light. This thing probably weighs about 10 pounds. Um, say Zach, look at this. This is a whole computer with RGB. <laughs> So this case right here is the cuck. So this case right here is the cuck. The cuck. The cuck. The cuck. 
um, Continuum Mini. It's a mini case. And give you an idea on size comparison, and it is not even like, it's about half the length of that case. Um, and Matt over here has a full size. This is just a mid tower, like a full size mid tower case. And if we line up with the front, here's what you get. It's like a beautiful chart difference there. So yeah, pretty small. Um, not necessarily a bad thing. Matt and I actually really appreciate compact builds. Um, Matt even said he really likes this case. So yeah, this is pretty adorable. This is all the builds we're gonna do yes, now is this. It kind of reminds me of like an upgraded version of the Roswell case with like a better side oh, yeah, panel like and everything FBM. and an I, actual mesh front. I think so. even the FBM was bigger than this. Like, this is just weird. So, okay, this this is really weird. The screws being like in the middle. But yeah, let's uh, let's open her up and see what we got inside. But I'm pretty confident it's going to be exactly what Matt said it was. Uh, just a, an integrated CPU where it's soldered on the board. Ooh, oh, yeah, I, you know, I remember seeing yeah. these boards. Look, we have a 240 gig SSD. Oh, yeah. I thought I had a hard drive, so this is even better. We do have a PCI line. We have a single, is, do you remember if eight it's gigs. four? Eight gigs. Okay, so single channel, that's going to really hurt this AMD A10 build. Um, it looks like the fan could actually come off the build. I'd need a screwdriver to get the back off, but, um, you know, it's, I don't know. Like, it's one of those things where... If they advertised it, they did not put gaming in the title at all. This would be kind of cool. Um, like it, it's unique, but I don't like that they even put gaming in the title at all because we're gonna show you guys why. Who knows, maybe we'll be blown away though. Maybe it'll game, but this is actually really not that uh, badly built. I mean, besides them having to do this, they could have done worse. They could have ran stuff along the top, but they ran it behind the board. Um, so I can't I can't be too upset about that. I gotta give them a little props for some of the cable management they did, but. Uh, should we get it hooked up and see if it works? Yeah, but the sticker is kind of awful. There you go. <laughs> I just pressed it under it. There we go. Look at that. I'm kind of impressed with the RGB. It's actually kind of <laughs> like, nutty. Like it, they actually have like programmable RGB to an extent on there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the fact that we got it, we got a Patriot. So it's, it's a name brand SSD. Um, I mean, it's obviously it's a pretty cheap one, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, for. And this was 450? 450 prime shipping. It's not that bad. It's, it's okay. So here, and like, here's the thing, and I, I don't want to like totally plug our company, but like with PC Bros, you can get an Optiplex that's 275. Um, comes with a, a second gen i7 i5 i5 from second gen i5, and it comes with a GT 710. I have a feeling it's going to be better than this for about half the price. So you get a much nicer looking case with RGB. Like I will say 100%. This is a nice looking build but I don't think it's even gonna perform on par with the GT710. That'll be fun to find out. Yeah, what we're gonna go ahead and do is plug this thing up, play some really light games. We're not gonna embarrass this thing and try to launch like Cold War or anything like that because we know it's just not gonna work, but we're gonna try the games like Minecraft, maybe some Valorant, maybe, Roblox. I don't know, Roblox, you know, Roblox. those kind of games. Uh, maybe some Bean Battles, you know, that's a game that definitely should run on this. Um, and yeah, we'll just see how it performs, but uh, yeah, on first impressions, it looks really good, but I feel like they made the price a little bit high for the amount of performance you're getting. So yeah, let's just see how it performs. Okay, guys, um, and Jackson doesn't even have a mic on right now, so you really can't even hear him, I'm being honest here, but uh, uh, we have a problem. Uh, this computer has had a host of issues. Uh, first up, we, well, try to use our benchmark drive. For those who don't know, we have a drive that has like an AMD drive and an Intel drive. That one is clearly our AMD drive. We didn't know for sure if it was going to work, um, and obviously it didn't. We were able to post to it and everything, but it just constantly does a blue screen after just a period of time. It just keeps giving us different blue screens, memory management errors, another one that I've never seen before. Um, and uh, yeah, it might blue screen while I'm doing this right now. Uh, but basically, we're unable to test it right now, um, which is unfortunate. We've tried swapping the RAM to a different lane we tried uh switching the SATA port we've tried using the drive it came with and it wouldn't even boot to that drive anymore so we tried to reinstall windows and now i won't reinstall windows on that drive it's, it's kind of a mess so what we're actually going to do i think is take advantage of these tech support that is provided to us even though i think what we've done is technically voided the warranty uh we're still going to try anyway see if we can get this thing fixed and try to salvage this video if not it's going to be like one of the most ultimate fail videos we've done on the channel in a while so uh yeah we'll, we'll get back to you in a little bit about that so guys this is pc number two uh matt called and got a i guess you call it a warranty i guess it's not even a warranty because it's just like an exchange they sent us a new one though 
It seems to be working right okay, right? Yeah, so it, it booted up perfectly fine. The whole situation is we were having issues getting into Windows and when we tried to use our other SSD, it would blue screen constantly. So reached out to Allied Gaming. They were basically nice enough to say, go to Amazon, issue the return. Uh, we could just drop it off and get our money back, but we went ahead and bought another one just to save time. It was prime shipping, so we got another one. And in theory, it should work. Only thing that's kind of weird is, well, we're in a new place right now. So um, yeah, more we'll on that to, later. have to take it home to benchmark it. <laughs> that's fun. But so, yeah, hopefully it works though. Um, it seems like it's going to, and I think we're gonna get you guys some benchmarks. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take that PC home and we're just gonna have a lot of fun. He's gonna watch a lot of porn mm. on it. All right, guys, as you can tell, I am not at the office because, well, we're in the middle of a move right now and we have absolutely no internet. So you might see a lot of me here for the time being until we get our enterprise internet installed, but that's a rant for a later video. Um, I wanted to go ahead and recap the benchmarking section of the video for this beautiful Amazon computer, which I had to take home and benchmark. Long story short, we had so many issues still. I know you saw a point in the video where we mentioned we were having blue screens and we thought that had to do with something we did. We installed our own benchmark SSD to save on time and assumed it would just boot into Windows and allow us to, let's say, use the games we already have installed on our AMD drive. So we said, forget this. We're probably having some incompatibility issues. So we decided to go ahead and go back to the other SSD. And after we swapped the drives, it was impossible to reboot back to the other SSD. We tried reinstalling Windows. And I don't know if this like motherboard combo has some special chipset it needs, but there is no way for us to boot back into Windows whatsoever after that. We decided to reach out to the customer support because we were really at a loss. We were about to move and we really needed to come up with some sort of solution. And the customer support rep basically told me, oh, those blue screen errors seem like something to do with hardware related. So you should probably issue a return with Amazon. So we did. We issued the return with Amazon and got this computer back. Fast forward a few weeks later, we're in our new office. We're all kind of settled in and we're going to finish this video. I bring the new computer home and start testing it and did not swap out the drive this time. I kept everything totally stock as is plugged the computer up, went in to install some games, and well, I had some blue screening issues. But I did determine what those blue screening issues were, and it has to do with Epic Games. I was actually able to launch two games, Valheim and Minecraft, which did not run great, by the way. You'll see those numbers here in a second. But I was actually able to launch them, um, and they would not blue screen. But every single time I tried to install Fortnite through Epic Games, we would get a different blue screen constantly. So... I don't think it's the fault of this PC. I do think it's a fault of the architecture of this, well, FX processor, this 8800P, which is really not that good of a processor. They would have been much better off just picking up like an Athlon 200G or something like that instead of this FX processor. But I do understand why they went this route because the motherboard and CPU is like an all-in-one combo and it's a pretty easy plug and play kind of situation. Now, once again, these were no way meant to be gaming PCs. They did kind of market it a little bit towards the gaming audience by adding all this RGB fans and stuff, but really, I don't think these cases cost that much more. Um, so I totally understand making their office PCs look pretty good, but as a buyer, you're probably better off just getting an Optiplex at this point instead of getting, well, something like this when you could get much more performance in a PC that doesn't look nearly as good as opposed to getting something that, well, for $450 is mainly looks and does have, well, some decent office performance with very little gaming potential. And as you can see in a game like Minecraft, we only got around like 40 FPS most of the time at 720p. Um, 1080p was about a similar story. It was very, very bottlenecked. Um, you could, in theory, play these games on even lower resolutions lower settings if you want to but, but I had the settings pretty low as is so it was kind of disappointing to see those numbers in a game like Minecraft, and from there on out, I kind of assumed it would just be really hard to run anything, just like Valheim, which is still kind of a demanding game. On all those settings at 720p, we got around like 15 to 16 FPS. So this is no way a gaming tower. I mean, you could probably play some emulation on it if you want to, um, but if you were looking at this PC, for some reason you type gaming PC like I did on Amazon and this thing pops up, just know this is not a gaming PC. It's mainly an office PC, and really, as an office PC, you're probably better off just buying a Dell Optiplex used right now and use that for office work as opposed to this because I really don't think you're getting that much more performance going with an FX processor on a AM4 motherboard than something like an older Sandy Bridge uh, Dell Optiplex because really same architecture same performance you're probably better off going that route and saving a lot of money. So overall, I'm kind of glad we are done with this video. Um, really not much else to say about this PC. How are we going to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick? All right, guys. So uh, two computers in and the second one we were still having issues with blue screening. 
I'm kind of on the fence of saying this computer really is not designed for gaming at all because you can't really even download most of the games. Epic Games was the culprit with this PC. It absolutely would not work whatsoever. So take that as you will. Um, I'm not gonna totally bash it as not being a decent office PC because that's what it's being advertised for. But normally even like the cheapest of office PCs will have some light gaming capabilities on the side. So overall, this is definitely not a recommend for me. And I just noticed this power supply screw coming out the back of it. It's like, it kind of <laughs> fell out in shipping probably, you know, hazards of shipping. We own a business and we understand that. But uh, yeah, there's just too many issues with this platform. I think it's more or less to do with that 8800P and the fact that it's just not that great. It's one of those things where honestly the case and the power supply, they did a pretty good job on it. Like, it's actually a really good looking platform. It just feels like it deserves slightly better components. So, you know, take that with what you will, maybe try getting like a slightly upgraded version, but like in the same case and everything. Cause I think you could spend maybe a hundred more dollars and get something that has a graphics card or even just a slightly better processor that's not really like a niche one that you've never heard of. So overall, not super happy with this PC, but we'll try to link some other alternatives in the description down below. There'll be affiliate links and they do help us out, but it probably won't be this one cause well, we're not super happy with it. So overall, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll yeah. see you guys in the next one. Bye. So hey, did you notice Matt and I are looking rather fine today? Well, that's probably because we're wearing our Toasty Bros merch and you could look fine too. Link in the description down below, teespring.com. Our friend Hunter Fabio just got in. He looked pretty awesome in his merch. Join Discord, by the way. Yeah, all that sort of fun stuff. See you guys. Goodbye. Dude, Hunter, Hunter Fabio. Fabio. Shout out.